We're going to come back. We're going to go back to this. How is everybody doing today on another cold, blistery day in Iowa? So let's just, we're letting people get on because it's just 11 o'clock. I have st started. Um, it's also going to be on Facebook on our page. So if um, you know somebody that's trying to get on and can't, didn't find the Zoom in the email, I only put the Zoom link in the email to try to avoid getting all these spammers. So if you, um, so if you know, and then that's why we also stream it live um, to Facebook. And if you um, want to make sure that you're on mute so that um, we're not hearing ourselves um, or I'm not hearing you, that is, um, I mean, you could, when you're talking, it's fine to be off of mute, but sometimes the secondary background noise um, uh, can be uh, difficult. So uh, anyway, we're so glad that everybody is here. This I'm Heidi, and this is Hen and Chick Studio. If you don't know where you're at or what you're doing this morning, hopefully you're not stuck somewhere in a snow drift. Um, and, and so glad for you all um, to be here. I've got slides to show because I have been having fun um, taking what we were doing yesterday. And so what were, uh, at first, and, and I guess, and first of all, this is a stay home and sew day. Um, this is my view out my sewing room a couple hours ago. Uh, I would say it's no better, actually, maybe even a little worse. Um, I can still see some of those trees, but not all of them. Um, we're out in the country and um, it is uh, not a very nice day in Iowa. Uh, again, if you are um, watching on Facebook, I will try to watch for comments. It's a little bit harder um, for me to monitor both of those things that I'm trying right now. Hang on a second. Sorry, I got my own. There we go. Um, so I'll try to monitor comments um, on Facebook. Uh, but And if you're on the Zoom link, great. If you're wondering where the Zoom link was, it was in our mass email that I sent out this morning. If you don't get our mass email, you can go to our website and simply um, sign up for the newsletter, which then gets you that at mass email. You are always welcome if you're on Zoom with me to put your comments in the chat and I will see those as well. So very good. And I can tell we've got people watching from um, Minnesota, Nebraska, um, Ohio, Iowa, of course. So welcome to everybody. And um, so what what am I excited about? Well, I'm excited about the box step so long. Over 500 people have downloaded the pattern as of this morning. And my my computer keeps telling me that more are downloading. Love it, love it, love it. I think this is gonna be a great project for busting your stash. If this is the first time you've heard about this, um, by all means, um, you are not too late to join the party, right? So the website's at the bottom of this screen, henandchickstudio.com slash box step. It's where you find what the plan is, where you find the download for the free pattern. It's where you're going to find our four weekly videos. And here's the best part about this. Free pattern. Use your own fabric. I'm not, you don't have to buy any new fabric, although we have plenty if you need some, don't worry. Um, but if you get the top done by February 15th, you can upload it on to our website again on this box step page, and you'll be entered into a drawing um, for prizes. So that is, um, uh, I think, extra exciting. You sew, you potentially win. And then you end up with a top that's done. You've used some of your stash and you might have a chance of winning a prize from Head and Chick Studio. So I hope you all think that is a great way. And um, I'll say a great way to be to be sewing. So all of the instructions are at, again, henandchickstudio.com slash box step. And um, again, 
You can start anytime. The only deadline is the February 15th. So if you start this today and you get it done tomorrow because we're inside for two full days, more power to you. I do not have the uplink um, ready yet, but I will soon because I know there will be somebody during this snowstorm that is actually going to get this project done. So yesterday we started with our first video and it was with Kate Colleran and myself about fabric selection. And if, again, now, if you have not seen this video yet, if you didn't get to see it live, not a problem. The recording of it is, it's on YouTube, it's on Facebook. I posted it again this morning on Facebook. It's on the box step page, trying to cover wherever you're at, that's where the video is gonna be. It was about a 45 minute conversation um, with Kate, who is the designer of this project and about fabric selection and color choices. Lots of great tips. If any of you were on there yesterday, chime in what your favorite part of um, the video was. I would love to know, um, you know, what you walked away uh, with. And um, uh, I heard people say they'd never, um, somebody emailed me and said, never thought about turning the bolt sideways when you're in the store to get a narrower view. Great. Love that. So again, if you, if there was some part of the video um, that you liked, um, by all means, um, uh, it, you know, let me know. I, I always appreciate the feedback. So this is week one. And then next, the three Thursdays, next Thursdays will be cutting, piecing, and putting it all together. Now you do not have to have the top, um, the, the quilt completed. You just have to have the top completed, but it wouldn't be um, fun to not talk about how we might finish that particular project. And so um, those are the four videos. This is all free, um, just us trying to help you. You know, I own Hen and Chick Studio. I'm a quilter. You know, the kinds of things that we were talking about yesterday are um, so good. So uh, of course it's snowing here, right? And so, but of course you have to get up and take care of everybody like usual. And last night the girls had been pulling out some of their fabrics and uh, it, was, it was also a battle um, with Ruby, our nine month old lab. Uh, she, she thought those were toys, those pieces of fabric. So we had, a, we had a little chasing going on as well, but they have a, an assorted group of fabrics that they were playing with. And um, I love how they look at color and select it. And this morning, Goldie said, mom, you know, how, where are we going to put these positions? And so based on the conversation that we had yesterday with Kate, I quickly got out my pencils, my colored pencils. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, um, uh, it, it was going to work. But at the same time, I scrapbook. So I have, um, uh, scrapbooking software that I do. So I very quickly took my graph paper and instead of uh, coloring um, for a period of time, I went in to my um, scrapbooking software and I created this variation of, um, of, of what um, Goldie and Virginia were talking about. A light pink, a dark pink, white, gray, and black. And um, and so then of course, you start to think, well, how is that gonna look as it turns into a quilt? So, um, and I'll come back to the, I'll come back to this one in a second. And so keep in mind, you're gonna see, I, I did not, I, I barely had enough time to get all of this done. Um, you'll see what I was doing. So please don't, don't criticize me. Give me a little grace for the white lines where the blocks didn't meet up perfectly. I did not spend hours aligning things. I just was trying to get a rough look. So can you see um, if I, uh, you know, I outline like here is a block. So there's nine blocks in this, in this variation. Again, I was just trying to get um, enough so that the girls could see how the placement um, of those fabrics might look. Um, 
again, you could go back to the conversation yesterday with Kate. She loves designing blocks that when they come together, they have secondary patterns um, and sec you know secondary options. So again, um, gonna, right here is the block. If you can see my cursor in the corner here. So this black and this black are opposite corners. Then this block is rotated one quarter. So once. So the I'm going to say every other block is rotated one quarter. Okay. So when you do that, then you get this secondary block that is like a pinwheel. You technically, and I can go back to Kate's quilt again, there's even a second, another pinwheel block over here with the grays in the middle and the pop pinks on the corner. She said she had intended to, this to look more like a block. So where the light pink and the dark pink are going around the outside, she had intended that to look more squarish. So to try to make that, um, I'm going to go backwards, all the way back to Kate's quilt back here. Um, again, you can kind of see the pinwheel that's forming here, a pinwheel that's forming here with the teal, and you can see that um, going back and forth. So tell me, and you know, uh, those of you again that are um, either way, Facebook, I've got it. I think I've got the comments up. Um, you know you know, how are you looking at that? So I'm going to go back again. So this is where they're starting. Okay. Rudimentary. Okay. This is my basic block. Then I was like, okay, again, I, my, this is the way my brain thinks. I wanted to make sure I was translating that correctly from her fabric requirements. Mm -hmm. And she technically has three units. One unit, unit number one, is used twice and it is in the positions that are opposite. So the dark number one and the dark up in the upper left-hand corner and the dark number one in the bottom right-hand corner are the same unit, just flopped. Okay, so that's unit number one. Unit number two, two is in the lower left corner dark number two medium warm number one medium cool that's unit number two and then go into the upper right hand corner exchange medium warm number one for medium warm number two otherwise the two fabrics stay the same okay is everybody kind of following me with that? That's a, you know, I that's I had to put words on top of the the fabrics here, the colors because I had to be able to translate that into how am I picking my fabric from? If you haven't seen, I have a little stash behind me. We well, you know, this is the, this is some of the girls' stash. I can't claim that. I, that I can claim. Okay, okay, so. Again, then I sh multiplied it so I could see how this was going to turn out. Um, lots of things go through my head uh, when it comes to fabric selection. Kate, again, did some great explanation of how to start with a main fabric. Um, somebody asked if it was available to be scrappy. Absolutely. I think this is a great scrappy quilt. I think it would be a very, you could make it a very controlled scrappy. So like in that black position, if I had four different blacks, I'd be fine with that myself. So if, if in every, if every black spot, dark number one was a different black, I'd be okay with that. If every dark number two was a different hot pink, I'd be okay with that. But I also said to Golding, Virginia, as I was talking, we were talking through this. If the hot pink and the gray next to it was something that I had two and a half inch wide strips of, 
I would sew those together and strip piece it and then cut them. And I would not worry about cutting individual squares. Does that make sense? But I'm how I'm describing that. So that um, so that again, you could see it in a variety of different ways. Okay. And I can come back to any of these as we talk. Um, again, I'm gonna say just welcome to everybody. I can see we're still getting more people on Facebook. Um, as well as here on um, the Zoom. So I'm um, so glad that everybody could join us and hopefully everybody is safe wherever they're at. And if, and if I didn't say this before, Hen and Chick Studio is closed today. <laughs> That's why we're home. That's why we're home. Okay, all right. So, all right. So I went to my fabric stash and I'm like, all right, I have been a Thimbleberries lover forever. You could also almost translate this into Kim Deal, but I have been a Thimbleberries um, connoisseur. Lynette and I have been friends for years and I happen to be hoarding why these two particular bundles, which have, you know, were, com were coming apart. They were not part of the same collection, but I'm like, oh, I still love all of these fabrics, right? I don't, I don't want any, and I have, I have, um, I have some of them right here in my hand. I'll show, I'll show them to you as we go here. So now, okay, what did I just learn and what I'm doing with Virginia and Goldie's? I'm like, I want to play with this. So I started looking at the fabrics and narrowing down. Hold on. The floor is my side table here. So I started narrowing down the, the fabric. So what I have in my hand is what you're seeing on the screen. Light, medium light, medium cool, medium dark, that's the blue. And in this version, I am using medium dark in positions one and two. And I'm gonna show you what, what happened, what I did. So the, the darker blue, then there's a dark green for dark number two and dark number one are these kind of brown black pieces that are in the collection. And I was able then again, um, you know, yesterday Kate talked about that she loves to use EQ software. I don't even know the, you know, exactly all of the information about EQ because I don't have it. But um, if you like this type of playing and you want to get more sophisticated than pencil and graph paper, uh, you certainly could uh, invest in that. Again, I have scrapbooking software. Glad to talk to you about that if you need um, information. To me, it is... Um, scrapbooking software for beginners. So I love it because I do a ton of digital um, scrapbooking. Um, that's all we could, if we have another snow day, maybe that's what I'll be talking about. Who knows? My one little word project. Okay, so here we go. Here's my fabric. Now I put them in to the positions where I thought they should go. Okay, so light, medium light, medium cool. And I tried to simulate the color as best I could. Then I took the words out so we could see that. Then I plopped it in to the, and actually on this one, it's maybe a little easier to see how my blocks go in there because of the white space where the blocks don't meet up. <laughs> Happy accident, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to call it that. I purposely aligned them so that there was a little bit of white space in between them so that you would know what. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to get silly, right? Okay. So there would be my layout. I kind of like it. I kind of like those. Those blacks would be the pinwheel. And then kind of to the right of it where the four blue squares are. And then the green would be those four greens kind of on the corner for a slightly different pinwheel. 
and the pinks, you know, would be forming that somewhat of a square. And I did like, I've got two pinks, two blues, two greens. Um, I definitely will do some type of, I'll say controlled scrappy, um, unless I dig through my staff and stash and find a little more thimble berries. I might, oh, actually, I think I can. I think I see a whole, a whole, so, you know, you won't, I see them back there. I, so I have more. Then as I was then continuing to play, I thought, oh, wait a minute. There's this beautiful dark purple and I didn't want to eliminate that. So now I switched, do you see? And I did medium two as the purple. So these are my two mediums. Fairly, this one's a little bit darker, but now I have to, now, now I got myself, hold on. I got to see if there's any more. That's all thimble berries. I'm looking to see if there's any other purples. There's more reds, there's more blues. Okay, no, no more purples in that collection, but you get the idea that maybe I could find a purple that was a little bit more in line with this blue, not quite so dark. All right, so now I'm gonna take the words off. Okay, so now you see what I don't like about this is the way the purples now and the blues come together in kind of a rectangle. And I'm not sure if um, that is, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, hang on one second. I got to just, okay, no. Oh. We'll get that turned off. There we go. There we go. And so anyway, so I could play a little bit more uh, with the purple in there or blues. And, and when I was over there, there are a lot more blues. So I might have a lot more fun making it scrappy blue um, and adding, you know, four or five, six of the same tones of blue than, add, than trying to add the purple. Okay. All right. Well, and, and I, I couldn't stop there. So then I had to get out and my photo is sideways, but, um, uh, if again, if you hang around with me long enough, you'll know that red and cherries are always a fan favorite with me. I have this particular charm pack, um, from Moda, uh, me and my sister designs and, Yesterday, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in the cutting video, but you do end up with two and a half inch wide um, pieces and four and a, it's two and a half by four and a half are the rectangles. So a charm pack would work if you had enough charm packs um, to make a big quilt. Now, remember, in order to um, be in in for the awards, it has to be the same size, which is 54 by 70, um, but, or add fabrics. Maybe there's a variety of things we could do, but my thought was it'd be a great place to start with some choices. And so I um, was playing around with the fabrics and I divided them Lots, um, I divided them from bottom to top. White is my light. And uh, when you look at the charm pack, there's all these dots um, that are in there. Uh, some have, like, I'll say a bigger print. They were mo what I felt like they were mostly white backgrounds. I think it could work. I want to I want to think about that again a little bit or do I get a white tonal and put in there not sure yet but I think um I think it could be fun uh on some of them it would be less contrast but that is my my light 
Then I went to um, medium light and was thinking the lime green. Cool being the, um, the orange, little pop in there. Then the two medium dark values, pink and blue, the teal. And then my two dark colors, red, of course, being dark number one, blue being dark number two. Okay. And let's see what that looks like. And again, the color is not perfect kind of thing, but you can kind of see where I'm going um, with this. The medium warm number two actually looks more, I'll say lavender to me on my screen, but it, it really was supposed to be the pink. It's just how my computer picked it up. And then if I take the words off, make it a little easier to see, now put it into my design. Again, I'm not real thrilled with the half rectangles in the pink and the blue. So I don't know. I'm going to go back and play with that a little bit. And I have probably more pink. I think opposite my red pinwheel, the pink centers. Um, so instead of having two medium value, two medium darks, I might go with just the pink and eliminate that, uh, eliminate this teal color. That makes sense to everybody what I'm, what I'm thinking there. All right. And, um, do we want to go, does anybody want me to go backwards and show you again what I've, what I was doing, how I was doing this? Does it make sense? Do you want to, do you want to be able to go back and look at that? Um, I mean, does it help just to look at this diagram? I think that that's helpful. Do you have questions about um, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, how I'm looking at it in the fabric choice category? Um, and the other thing, um, I guess I will say, as you guys are potentially coming up with questions, is go to our Facebook creative community. If you are not already a member, the members are posting um, pictures and the, the, the variations that they're coming up with are stunning, absolutely stunning. There is no wrong way to do this quilt. It can be bright, it can be warm and dark. It can be, I mean, it can be, you know, I, again, I think that Kate did a great job of discussing scale. And that's one thing that I felt like with the fabrics I was picking um, and the collections and like the, either the thimble berries or um, the cherries is that the scale is small enough that it's going to look good. If all of a sudden I have to, because think about this, if this is a five inch square, now I'm down to a two and a half inch uh, square from one of those is, you know, is the scale going to be uh, right for this particular um, project? But again, uh, our customers are, you know, members of our creative community. So this is a Facebook group. And if you, again, if you have not joined, you'll be asked three very simple questions um, just to, uh, we try to avoid any of the um, bots that are out there and all the spammers. Um, so those questions are to help us control um, who uh, is coming in and everything. But that is what I was wanting to show you guys today. I'm going to go back and land on this for a minute. Um, if if there are any questions, and I can, I can also stop share. If see if anybody has any questions, you can. You're welcome to come off of mute if you're on Zoom or type them into Facebook. Um, I'm trying to monitor that as well to see if there's any um, questions. Or have you picked your fabrics? Are you already sewing? Is 
say, Jan, you're always pretty good about already choosing your fabrics. Have you chosen them yet? Hold on. We got to take you off mute. Hold on. I don't Me? There. Okay. Yes, I've chosen my fabric and it's starched, ready to cut. But I've got two other quilts in the queue ahead of it. So I'm like working on one right now. Um, making little bright little squares and uh good. Yeah. So it'll get there. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you stay in and stay warm sewing. I love it. My plan. And I just see that Deb is watching on um your friend Deb, uh, our friend Deb. Uh and she has her fabric picked out and has it cut. So that's awesome. Yeah, she's ahead of me this time. Absolutely. Does anybody else want to jump on and and share at all? I will, Heidi. All right, Hi, Heidi. I'm Karen. I'm Karen from Independence, Missouri. Yes, Karen. My three... Hi, my three friends and I made a trip up there. You are four hours north of us. I That's wish you cool. were so much closer because I would be there all the time. But well, you know. I did pick my fabrics out. I have them on a graph. Oh, look so at you. I'm ironing and cutting today. Show yeah, everybody. I got, Get a I got them done. There you go. Yeah, so Show it one more time, Karen. Closer. They're not Show real big. No, but that is an awesome way of I doing do. it. What a great way so that you, you've you just put a little swatch so you keep, because it's one of those yeah. blocks you could get turned around real fast. Mm -hmm. You put the rectangle on the wrong yeah. side of the- I'm a visual person. Yep. 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 I agree. I'm a visual person and my friend had given me all but two of these fabrics, uh, shirting fabrics. And I just hadn't done anything with it. And I thought I could make my brother a quilt. So that's what I'm going to do. That's awesome. And stuff. So I'm excited. So Why I'm ironing well, and cutting today. Well, thank you, Karen. And the next time you head north, you'll just have to pack a bag and book a night at the retreat yes. center. And then you can feel like you're staying for a while. That's right. That's right. We did a four day trip and we hit. 15 quilt shops in Iowa on the way up and back. So we spent four nights. We stayed in West Des Moines because it was more locally centered. And we had a blast. Wonderful. Well, we're glad that you did come and we are glad that you're uh, hanging out with us, uh, not only today, but in, I know you're you're a, one yeah. of our regulars in the creative community. You should take a picture if you haven't. I don't know that yeah. I saw it, but take a picture of that chart you just showed and post it in the creative community because I bet there is somebody else who could really benefit from that. I did it just before we went on. So good. you were probably busy, but I did just yeah. post okay, it good. this morning. That is awesome. So. All right. Thanks for everything you do. Oh, thank you. Heidi. Yes. Jan. Um, something I also do, I like that chart that she made, but I take photographs of the different groupings and then I take the color out. So I'm just looking at black and white so I can look at contrast. And I, that really helps me a lot. Um, mm. whether it's something I'm just laying it out or just, you know, picking the fabrics and, and, uh, it, it usually works out pretty good for me. Man, if I'd had more time to plan, I could have done that with my bundles this morning. <laughs> Dang. Oh, well, I'll need another snowstorm. No, no. Well, wonderful. Anybody else want to chime in? I'm trying to make sure. I'll need another snowstorm. No. Oh, now my volume has come up again and I got it. There we go. I don't want to hear myself. Well, nobody has to get on and chat. And I, we, you know, we, I, I just wanted um to share, I, I say where my brain was going after yesterday, because I think it was such a good conversation. 
And I think now these two videos, if you want to say um, together, I'm actually going to probably put um, this video also on the box step page because I think that showing it with the words is helpful and to be able to see then how that translates um, to, a, to a quilt is helpful. All right. Well, I, 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 you know, I hope you all stay warm and safe in your sewing rooms. And I'm glad you were able to join me for a little bit this morning. And uh, our hope is that we'll be back at the store tomorrow. But watch your email, watch your Facebook. Uh, we'll keep you posted. All right. All right. Everybody have a great day and have fun sewing and tell me, tell us the progress you're making in the creative community. Bye, Heidi. Thanks. Bye.